buying the buildings from them don't know how much too efficient they are when they buy it. So you have a system that's almost perfectly designed to eliminate accountability at every step in the process. And so of course you should expect that you're going to get a lot of crappy buildings under those circumstances. If you don't fix the underlying information, then the markets can't function properly and you're not going to get where you want to go. And you would say you have to fix what underlying thing? What's the well, thing that you think is? I would I would uh, distinguish between market segments. I think yeah, in the government segment, segments, segments across the board, the basic problem is bureaucratic resistance. Um, the, the landlord agencies, in particular, are just fight this stuff like you wouldn't believe. Um, they don't want the buildings to get out of their control. They don't they don't like um, really getting out of their comfort zone. I think in the uh, on those like, you you, you, uh, you there's so many people who are blaming. Do you blame the, the comptrollers and the bond council and GASB, or do you just blame the basic bureaucracy? Do you know the way that they're being valued right now in plans? No, 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 no. There's no problem. Um, and the government sector, the finance, I mean, there's, just, there's a ton of money out there ready to be deployed. Um, but GASB still says it's a debt on your books, right? Um, well, no, it, it, they're, they are, in some market segments, shifting away from operating leases. But that, that would be a, a, a um, problem in some market segments. But in the federal government segment, there's, that's never been an issue. But, but, I'm sorry, I was talking about state and local. Yeah. So, so that will be a problem for some financing, which is done with operating leases. But that's a relatively small proportion of the, of the uh, so it's just bureaucracy. It's really the, the, the resistance in the bureaucracies to doing anything to accelerate this process is, is, is beyond belief unless you've actually been. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think in the private sectors, I think we're faced with a different, um, with a different problem. Um, if you, the, the low income segment is, is obviously different because they, low income building owners, uh, or tenants don't have any money to invest. They're not in the investment game, no matter how good the investment is. They don't have money to invest. They're living hand to mouth. So that's a, we have to segregate that. I think in the private sector, both residential and commercial, where, where the owners do have money to invest, the answer is mandates. I've been at this for 35 years in, 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 the, in the private, commercial, building owners, and residential are not going to move until there's mandates. I think you've, you've seen it, and for people who ask when you say that, I would, I would point out a couple of examples. We have successfully retrofitted virtually all existing commercial buildings in the country with sprinkler systems for those buildings that were built before the age of sprinkler systems. Those systems have no payback, none, zero. Okay. On the residential side, I believe every state in the country if you live outside of a sewer district, you have, as you're selling your house, you have to bring your house up to modern, uh, your septic system up to modern standards. Again, zero payback. All that's done. All that's done. The real estate industry screamed and yelled about sprinkler systems. 